Monsieur de Lafayette, you are safe and sound. Safe and sound indeed. But with a broken soul. I have just returned from Place Dauphine. I understand, Monsieur. The Guard National. I was too late. All these brave men cut down in a single attack. Why was I not among them? Alas, I am condemned to outlive them and to witness an even greater calamity. What disaster do you fear, Monsieur? It's a highly sensitive matter. I've been waiting in vain for a message of the utmost importance. Can you tell me more about it? Ma foi, at this point, I don't really have a choice. You can speak freely. Have no fear. Before the King's attack, I sent a squad of horsemen on a very important assignment. They were to collect a precious cargo at Gros Caillou, not far from the Hotel des Invalides. What sort of cargo? I'm sorry, Aegis, but I swore on my life to keep it a secret. All I can tell you is that it would give us a decisive advantage. But I haven't heard from my men. I'm worried that the exchange may have met with misfortune. It is paramount that I learn what happened and who has the cargo now. The future of the kingdom depends on it. Since it's so important, I will go there myself and attempt to solve this mystery. mechanical revolution has changed the face of the kingdom, but the coffers are woefully empty. The debt, Monsieur Necker. This debt that you and your banking friends helped to create for your own benefit, and which is now forcing us to levy new taxes. Will my subjects be able to bear another tax? Yes, Your Majesty. As long as it is distributed fairly, the representatives of the nobility, the clergy, and the Third Estate must come to an agreement. That is why we have convened the Estates General. Tomorrow you are to preside over the opening ceremonies. Oh, your Estates General. Nothing good can come of it. You have roused the spirit of rebellion. All I hear about are their damned cahiers de doléances. My rightful enjoyment is being challenged. The streets of Versailles are teeming with loudmouth fanatics with sacrilegious thoughts. Tell me, Monsieur le Ministre, have you purposely set this army of the unwashed against me? Your Majesty, I have always been your most faithful servant. Beware, Necker. Beware. I have a surprise in store for anyone who dares attack my throne.
dear Suzanne, take my hand, please. Don't let them take me away. No. Oh, no, this, this has to stop. I don't want to be tormented anymore. That is not my intention. I have come to rescue you. Rescue me? But what on earth are you? It is of no importance. What did you see and hear before you regained consciousness? I had frightful visions, rageful wraiths filled with pain and sorrow. And it was cold enough to curdle the blood. Oh, it's impossible to describe all the rage and anger. I was in another body, I think. So big, so powerful. And there was this commanding voice ordering me to spread terror and death. Did I really hear it? Or did I momentarily lose my mind? Who are you, monsieur? Don't you know? I'm Jacques Necker, Ministre des Finances. Well, I was before I was captured. But this situation suggests that the King has decided to dismiss me from his service. What does he accuse you of? My alleged connivance with the Third Estate, no doubt. And most of all, for having been the first to ask to convene the Estates General. How and when were you captured? When the machines attacked, my wife and I fled our home to hide not far from there, in the Église Sainte Marie. But we didn't stand a chance against the machines. They overran the nave, wantonly mowing down the faithful. My wife, my poor wife, she wasn't able to escape. I'm sadly convinced of this. As for me, my life was spared only so I could be tormented. What is the meaning of all this? What will you do now? There is no future for me in this kingdom. I need to find a safe place where I can prepare for my departure as soon as possible. I will take you to the Cordelier Convent. You will be safe there. A la bonne heure, she's back. Aegis, what a joy and relief to see you again. Monsieur. Welcome to our stronghold. I'm sure that everyone here is aware of the great debt we all owe you. As you can see, the most exhausted among us are growing stronger while the most determined are already planning our counterattack. I did not expect to see you all together. Four days ago, the representatives of the Third Estate gathered in a tennis court. They swore not to separate until they had established a constitution for the nation. But that was not the only oath we swore. All the honorable men who were at Versailles, representatives and patriots, members of the Club Breton, secretly swore to meet here if they were dispersed. You, Aegis, have allowed them to gather once again. Though unfortunately many are missing, we still have hope. Why did you choose to meet in this convent? It was my idea. Voyez-vous, I stay here whenever my obligations bring me to Paris. No other retreat inspires such peace and contemplation. Et puis, truth be told, this building has always felt like a fortress to me. Just look at how thick these walls are. For two whole days, the Patriots in the Quarter consolidated the outer walls to make it an impenetrable citadel. No automat has broken through our defenses yet. Where are the monks, Mon Père? They are secluded in their quarters, praying for the salvation of the people of Paris. However, we bear no illusions. We are weak, we are divided, and we are unarmed. Without you, Without your warrior strength, we have no chance of turning things around. You are sent by heaven above, Aegis. From now on, you may consider the Cordelia Convent your headquarters and a welcome refuge. We must speak, you and I. 
In private, if you please. Monsieur de Lafayette must not hear a word of what I'm about to tell you. What do you mean? You all seem to be certain that I will use my strengths to serve your cause. Are you forgetting that I have a task to accomplish? Not at all, madame. We all know and support your plan to free Monsieur de Vaucanson. That is why I've taken the time to think of a way for you to get to the Bastille. I am listening. There is a patriot in Paris whose pamphlets have aroused Monsieur de Lafayette's ire. His anger is so strong that the poor man had to disappear to escape arrest. I know that he is secretly hiding in the quarries in Montmartre. A labyrinth he is said to know like the back of his hand. If anyone can help you navigate the obstacles that keep you from the Bastille, it is the elusive Monsieur Marat. Very well. I will go and find him. Monsieur Necker. I owe you my life, madame. So I am embarrassed to ask you for anything more. Do not fear. You have my full attention. Suzanne, my beloved wife. I cannot bring myself to accept her death. Despite all the evidence, I still hope to see her alive again. I need to be sure. Mon Dieu. What have I done to deserve such a fate? Why has the king sworn to destroy me? And all that I hold dear. After everything I've done for him. My abnegation. Why would the king owe you anything? I dedicated my life to the kingdom as his minister. On my life and my fortune as well. I refused to accept any remuneration for my services in order to keep the accounts balanced. And I personally filled the king's coffers with two and a half million livres from my own private accounts. Bonds in the Caisse des Comptes, which the king keeps in a tailor-made armoire de fer in the Palais des Tuileries. He stores all his secrets there. I'd wager there's enough in there to sully his reputation a hundred times over. You must retrieve these bonds post-haste, madame. They must not be used to allow this madman to build more murderous automats. Do I have any chance of opening it? Don't even think about it, madame. Despite your incredible strength, that safe is said to be impenetrable. It was designed precisely to that effect. I personally never had access to it. I suppose that its contents were too unofficial for the honest minister that I always was. Who has the key? The king does, that's for sure. Anyone else? How could I know? His shadow advisors, most likely. Now that I think about it, there's a rumor that has been going round Versailles for a while now. It's said that Monsieur de Mirabeau used to come and go as he pleased at the Tuileries. That he oversaw diplomatic missions for the Crown. Not in any official capacity, of course. Who knows? He might know more about this matter than I do. I will ask him. I will look into what happened to your wife. Bless you, madame. Where should I start my investigation? In the Faubourg Saint-Germain, east of Les Invalides. We were separated in the Église Sainte-Marie, on Rue de Bourgogne. I shall be off. You are the only hope of seeing my beloved wife again, and of foiling the plans of the clockwork tyrant. Monsieur Bailly. Ah, oh, mademoiselle. I am very pleased to find you here with us within the shelter of these walls. I found a document written in a script that I was unable to read. Let me see. Ah, je vois. These pages were written using some sort of shorthand. A variation on Taylor's system, no doubt. I want to use it myself from time to time while jotting down my ideas as they come. What does it say? Hmm. It's a bit difficult to decipher. Je crois. I believe it's an autopsy report. The author writes that the subject died from a large dose of prussic acid. What is prussic acid? My apologies, Aegis, but I'm no chemist. You should ask Monsieur Lavoisier. Goodbye, Monsieur B. Monsieur Lavoisier. Madame, you're my guardian angel. I don't know anything about you or what drives you. But I owe you my life. 
and can refuse you nothing. What is prussic acid? It's a volatile compound extracted from Prussian blue, which is a pigment derived from the cochineal, an insect. What does it do? Oh, it's a lethal poison of the most dangerous sort. Though at weaker doses, it merely induces a deep soporific state, or a coma, if you will. A deadly poison. Ages? Is everything all right? Goodbye, Monsieur Levoisier. Monsieur de Mirabeau. Have your efforts paid off? Minister Necker claims that you are a familiar face at the Twillery Palace. Well, that old story. Will it hound me until I have drawn my last breath? This, madame, is nothing but an unfounded rumor that I am trying in vain to dispel. To what do I owe the displeasure of having to defend myself once again? I must get hold of some documents that are kept in an armored safe in the King's chambers. What luck could resist your talents? Minister Necker said it was indestructible. Hmm. Oh, I see. Well, let me think. Who could help you? After all, a lock is nothing more than a simple mechanism. Nothing that can resist the expertise of our dear Monsieur Bailly. Why don't you ask him for help? I'll be sure to do so. Now, who else might be of use? Oh, there's Monsieur Lavoisier as well, our gunpowder commissioner. I'm sure he'll have no trouble finding you something you can use to blow the door off that stubborn safe. Good. I will go and find him. Now, if you'll forgive me, I have an urgent matter to attend to. You are forgiven for everything. In that case, it has been a pleasure, madam. How was your search at the Vauconson's home? I found this penknife there. I was struck with a vision as soon as I picked it up. I saw Mademoiselle de Vauconson running from the Comte de Galeostro. This letter refers to a hiding place where she often sought refuge. It's in the Jardin du Luxembourg. I know the place. And one day, Eugène and I were walking in the Luxembourg gardens when suddenly Athenais jumped out from her hiding place like a wild animal. It was a startling, almost frightening sight. The spot is on the edge of the garden, hidden by vegetation between two statues. I'm looking for a way to force a lock that is supposed to be unbreakable. Monsieur de Mirabeau advised me to ask you for help. But I'm an astronomer, mon enfant, not a locksmith. I know my way around lenses, filters, racks and tripods. But I've never given a moment's thought to how a lock works. God, Monsieur de Mirabeau was joking with you, that's all. Où est-il, ce brave homme? So that we might ask him. He has left. A matter that could not wait. Excuse me? Do you mean he left the convent? That's madness. What was so important that he would put himself in such danger? Intriguing indeed. Monsieur Lavoisier. What can I do for you, Aegis? I would like to access the contents of a safe that is supposedly unbreakable. Dare I ask for your help, Monsieur Lavoisier? And how can I be of assistance to you, madame? I need gunpowder to break through the door. Gunpowder? But I don't have a speck of it, mon ami. <laughs> Do you think I just walk around with explosives in my pockets? Oh. I apologize. It was Monsieur de Mirabeau's idea. Mirabeau? What is this ridiculousness? I suspect he knows full well whatever he's playing at. Where is the animal? So we can ask him what's truly going on. He has left. He had an urgent matter to attend to. Eh bien. I'm sorry, madame. If I could inspect the safe and determine what metal was used in its fabrication, I might be able to find a solution. But given the circumstances, I'm sadly not in a position to help you. I understand. Goodbye, Monsieur Levoisier. I have just come from the Tuileries. The Armoire d'Affaires has been ransacked. 
Diable. Someone beat us to it. This is very unfortunate. God only knows what we would have found there. Whoever it was had to fight for it. I found a body there, killed by automats. Mon Dieu. How dreadful. Dreadful indeed. Especially since I discovered this in the victim's hand. And what is that, pray tell? A dueling pistol. With your name engraved on its plate. Oh, I... May we? You're right. It is my pistol. It was stolen along with a number of other things. It happened just before the Estates General at my lodgings in Versailles. But how on earth did my weapon end up in the hands of this poor soul? I am certain we will find an explanation. Those letters you have... You were about to throw them in the fire, weren't you? They belong to me, and I shall do with them as I see fit. I don't have to explain myself to you. I do find it curious how you left the convent without telling anyone. How those letters seem to weigh so heavily in your hands. So these letters appeared as if by magic. Just as the Armwad affair was being ransacked. You misinterpret my intentions, but you're right about one thing. I do have a confession to make. You and I serve the same cause. The Queen's. You claim that we're fighting for the same cause. Very well. I shall give you the benefit of the doubt, and an opportunity to convince me. You can start by telling me about the letters. My private correspondence with the King. I had a key to the armoire, which served as a mailbox. Are you conspiring with the King? No, you don't understand. I was something of a shadow advisor, a, a diplomat, working in complete discretion. I feared his stubbornness would lead the kingdom to ruin, so I tried to reassure him regarding the aims of the Third Estate. But when Vaucanson told me what happened at Meudon, I realized it was a lost cause. I found your pistol in the hands of a dead man. Who was this unfortunate soul? Mathieu. One of the servants I had sent to retrieve the letters. I gave him the pistol for self-defense. Alas, it seems it was of little use to him against the King's automats. Tell me, what happened at Madon? It's all here in this letter, written in the King's own hand. Please, give it to the Queen. She must learn the truth. You claim to be a friend of the Queen. The King has gone insane. After what happened at Meudon, that much is clear. We can no longer expect any leniency from him. Hence, my support for his wife. She's a headstrong woman, and much wiser than she lets on. You must know that she means to put her youngest on the throne. The young prince, Louis Charles. A regency would restore peace and unity to the kingdom then all that would remain would be to establish a constitution. I have the support of the people. They trust me. I'm the only one that can bring about these reforms. Why were you in such a hurry to destroy your correspondence? The letters contained sensitive information about my third estate colleagues. If it had gotten out, I would have surely lost my allies' trust, as well as any hope of establishing a regency along with it. This time, it's over for me. The princess was ransacked, and I barely escaped from the guards sent to arrest me. I must disappear, and hope that things will one day turn to my advantage. In truth, the timing is excellent. According to my informants, the king is planning a coup de force against the Third Estate. I think it's high time for all of us to go underground with you. Once we're hidden in the catacombs, we can prepare a counter-offensive in peace. Does the Duke approve of this withdrawal? Oh, that fool. 
He's indecisive as usual. Always busy dreaming about his cousin's crown. But I've prepared the terrain. He will let me do as I please as long as I serve his interests. Look at them, parading around like peacocks, these scoundrels, rotten to their very core. See how they proudly display their vices and shameful privileges, tirelessly working to drag morality through the mud, trampling love itself. The Queen is said to have read your liaison before her husband banned it. It's hilarious, isn't it? I'm not surprised. No matter how hard I worked to denounce their immoral practices, the aristocrats saw my novel as nothing more than a light-hearted bit of fluff. How naive I was to imagine that my pen could slice away the gangrene of their debauchery. Well, fortunately, you have more than one string to your bow, mon capitaine. Monsieur Marat. Huh? Hey? Who, who goes there? Ah, oh. oh, la diable, c'est ma tante. So this is the famous Huntress Diana I've heard so much about. Truly, it is an honor, madame. Now let me have a look at you. Are oh, we? Oui. You're just as they described. An angel of death. Descended from the heavens to vanquish the clockwork tyrant. Who depicted me this way, monsieur? Mes compagnons, madame. Chief among them is Monsieur Chaudelot de la Clos. They have observed you dispensing justice all over the city. A most expeditious justice at that, as befits the crimes committed by our good king. Hmm. What a strange machine you are. Gifted with intelligence, clearly, but also with speech and the freedom to do as you please. Cependant, you are still an automat. Who is your master? It was on the Queen's orders that I came to Paris. The poor thing. To what new level of desperation has her husband's madness driven her? Does she finally intend to leave this kingdom? Where she should never have set her dainty little feet? No, monsieur. She means to put an end to her husband's madness. <laughs> what? With you? You in what army? That's quite amusing, you must admit. And you, monsieur Marat? Who is your master? I serve not a master, but a cause. That of the Duke d'Orléans. His cousin the king has no place on that throne, and nor does his wretched dynasty. The Bourbons, along with their wars, their crimes, and their vices, are finished. It's high time their scepter be passed to an enlightened, just monarch. One who is sympathetic to the people's sufferings. But now that I think about it, madame, look at us. We've been standing around chatting like old friends for several minutes, and I still don't know to what I owe the pleasure of your visit. I must go to the Bastille, where Monsieur de Volconsin is imprisoned. We, oui. Such a sad fate for a king's lackey. And what do you want with your creator? This man whose blood-stained hands built the army that's currently setting Paris ablaze. What Volconsin has done, only Volconsin can undo. Fair enough. Alas, while I come and go as I please through these tunnels, it is impossible to enter the fortress. Impossible, dites-vous. A sanguinary automat is spreading death and terror in the depths of this quarry. At the cost of their lives, my comrades were able to sabotage the floor of the cave to limit its movements. Nevertheless, it stands between you and the tunnel that leads to the Quartier du Temple. And that's the only way to reach the Bastille. And yet, that's exactly what I intend to do, Monsieur Marat. 
À votre guise. I shall not attempt to dissuade you. There is one small thing, though. I had to disable the mobile walkways to protect myself from the automats. But since you managed to come here, I assume you already know a lot about these devices. Indeed. Here. This will allow you to reach the lower tunnels. the Duke d'Orléans' faithful retainer. He was to prepare the way for his takeover, and now he has become one of the king's most bloodthirsty automats. How ironic. You're alive. I'm a platoon. Ready. Fire. F fire at will. Oh, Senor. Oh, we can't stop them. They're upon us. Fixed bayonets. Fixed bayonets. The fighting has stopped. It's over. Voyez. The Huntress Diana appeared to us. She's the one who saved you. But the troops. Where are the troops? You are the only survivor, Leclerc. No. No. We were so close. But those machines... An entire battalion would have been unable to defeat them. 
We were forced to retreat. Chased into these tunnels by the automats. It was madness to attempt an attack on the Bastille. You're wrong. I'm a military man. It was a bold maneuver, but it was a calculated risk. After all, that old fortress is a pile of stones with no buffers, curtain walls, or bastions. As for its garrison, our agents were certain. Only a handful of veterans should have been there. A, a single charge should have sufficed to disperse them. But the king made other arrangements. He increased the fortress's defenses and placed a swarm of automats at the service of a terrible machine. Why did you launch this attack? Three of our companions were held captive in the fortress. Our best agents. Agents? Spies, if you prefer. We, the supporters of the Duc d'Orléans, have always worked in the shadows, within the Queen's entourage, in the tribunes of the Estates General, among the Patriots in the clubs, amidst the rank and file in the army. We have had some success, you have to admit. What machinations have you discovered? Enough to make Monsieur Marat's ink flow and bring down our rivals. Necker's speculations, Lafayette's dishonorable behavior, Mirabeau's corruption, and many darker secrets. Tell me about this machine that guards the Bastille. We were prepared to face an enemy, not an executioner. That thing, half butcher's block, half stocks, was designed to make heads roll. Who captured you, monsieur? There was some confusion in the fray, but Cagliostro was in charge. He was the one who ordered me to be shut up in that coffin. Then I was thrown into that awful place where I lost consciousness. After that, everything is a series of blurred visions with a voice that ordered me to kill again and again. I intend to enter the Bastille and free Monsieur de Vaucanson. For what possible reason, mon dieu? She claims that he's the only one who can stop the machines. Indeed, it's possible. In that case, if you're ready to face the abomination that blocked my path and slaughtered my lieutenants, then don't waste a second. Let's not stay here much longer, Mara. Let's head back to our burrow. There's still some wine left in this part. More than enough, Laclo. More than enough. Wonderful. We'll drink to our broken dreams until this finally comes to an end. Here you are at last. This is where the path to the Bastille begins. And to think, I would have never thought you'd make it this far. Cependant, I would advise you not to rush. The fighting in these tunnels has weakened the structure. If you go in there, I'm afraid you won't be able to turn back. Delor, I have just one bit of advice to give you. Before going any further, make sure you're not leaving behind any unfinished business. Any commitments that you have not fully met. I shall return to my hiding place. In these unsure times, you can never be too careful. Ne croyez-vous pas? That's enough, Monsieur Le Comte. My assistants and I are exhausted. We're not gravediggers, à la fin. Oh, I understand. The task you have been given does not please you. Perhaps you do not find it worthy of your high qualifications. Indeed. My family has been dedicated to serving the kingdom for over a century, and you cannot ignore what it has cost us. I refuse to fall that low. Very well. As you wish. Since this is the case, you will have a more prestigious assignment starting today. Was there anything else? What about my assistants? Will they come with me? Unfortunately not, mon ami. But I promise you that they will never complain about their fate again. Monsieur le Comte! Monsieur le Comte, are you there? The prisoners, they're suffering.
What is the meaning of this? <laughs> As promised, I have interceded on your behalf. The king has named you Gouverneur de la Bastille. Do you realize what an honor this is? Put an end to this sinister farce, Monsieur le Comte. Order your machines to unhand me at once. Ah! Listen to my voice, mon ami. Nothing but my voice. Sentences delivered by court order are nothing more than cowardly murders. Barbaric crimes committed legally in the name of the entire nation. These cruel laws are the doing of the tyrants who rule us. They are the chains they have always used to oppress the human race. And that, mes amis, is why the death penalty must be abolished. Well said.
most faithful servant. Monsieur, listen to me. But I can no longer do what you ask of me. Listen to me, Bosson. Kill, kill, and kill again. What do you mean? Of what crimes do you accuse yourself? The heads must roll. They must roll straight into the pit. Cela suffit. Who are you, monsieur? Uh, who am I? Oh, I am Charles-Henri Sanson, executor of court rulings. The executioner of Paris? The executioner? Oh no, not anymore. That death factory. We had to lead the horde of the tortured victims there and hand them over to killers who are far more efficient and skilled than us. When I tried to give up my position, the king and the count offered me a new role. Greffier at the Bastille. An easy job. And I fell into their trap. Oh. But now that I think about it, they must be the ones who sent you. They want my head. You're rambling. I am Aegis, their worst enemy. Come to rescue Monsieur de Volconson. Oh. His Majesty's honored guest. The man for whom our good king reserves his most ruthless treatment. No one deserves to be punished like that. Here, take this key. Monsieur de Vaucanson's cell is downstairs. And do not delay. He is dying, madame. He's dying. into a cold machine. It's all right. Stay calm. Well, Ludia, what has Cagliostro told you? Has he sent you to put me out of my misery? No. I'm going to get you out of here. Let me help you. There's no point. I'm burning with fever, and I'm already short of breath. Death lurks around every corner in this prison. I, I couldn't escape it. I... I'm not long for this world. No, you can't. Outside, your automats are slaughtering men, women, and children. What you have done, monsieur, only you can undo. What I have done, the miracles I performed, the wonders I gave to this kingdom, it was nothing but vanity. I closed my eyes to it for so long. Mesmer, Cagliostro. Souls snatched from their eternal rest like water from a well. I should have set fire to the workshop. I should have melted my creations. <laughs> it's not too late to stop the massacre. I don't have the strength. You must... <coughs> Speak, monsieur. Say something, enfant. You must stop them. The king and his loathsome henchman, Cagliostro, the master of the machines. He gives them their orders. He must be silenced at all costs. <coughs> Take my hand. I am not your father. No more than you are, Atenais. You're but the vessel that contains what is left of her broken soul. <coughs> Ludia, I don't want to die. 
without hope. In the name of what is left of her in you. In the name of her love for you. I beg you to free her from the purgatory our enemies have confined her to. I will grant your wish, monsieur. Do you realize what that means? Are you ready to make that sacrifice? The ultimate sacrifice. <laughs> I shall never see her darling face again. Much petite. You must set her free. Bring her back into the light. The light. The... Monsieur. Monsieur. Daughter, will you never listen? This machine belongs to the king, Vulisave. There's nothing I can do about it. Did he also order you to torture her? The king wants me to make some improvements. And you obey him just like that? That's enough, Atenais. Let me work. And from now on, I forbid you from coming in here without my permission. Ugh! You're no better than your master, Papa! 